recorded. Stop record speech off. Hey guys, Brother Daggett here, and I'm about to bring you a message that I feel that God has given unto me. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. Chapter 22, beginning with the 17th verse. We're only going to do that 17th verse. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is athirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. And I want to use for its subject just one word, just one word and one word only, and that word is come, come, would you bow your heads? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, as I come before you in the name of your son, Jesus, hallelujah. Lord, let your power just run right through this place right now. Lord, I'm asking that you would do with hearts and souls tonight. And Lord, I'm asking that you would help me to preach what you have given unto me. And I ask it in the name of your son, Jesus giving you praise and glory and everybody said amen and amen <clears throat> about a few hours ago i would say i was i was in my i was swimming and i was i was listening to Jimmy Swaggart, a, a, a singer, also a pastor. And he had been singing a song. And I forget exactly what the song was. But then... And then I'm ducked under the water, and power just came all up on me. My Lord, I could feel it, and I can still feel it today. Chill bumps are breaking up all over me, and it's so amazing what God has been doing and what he will continue to do. And I'm telling you right now, guys, ladies and gentlemen, we have a power. There is a power of God in this building, in this place, uh, in, the, in these videos. More than ever before, we have a God that can save our soul and has saved people's souls for many, many, many years, even in the Bible. And tonight, as I come to you, I'm hoping that... Stop recording. Speech off. I'm just making sure that my thing's still recording. I'm hoping tonight that I can bring to you what God has given unto me. And I have a few points that... I would want to make tonight, but before I do that, I also wish to give a little, um, illust I want to show you something, um, I want to give you a few points, but also, I want to also show you what God has shown unto me. So I'm reading this book called Preaching Evangelistically and Pastors, if, if you have that book and you read it, um, I've been learning a little bit about it and, uh, and as soon as I was reading, it was talking about come 
and I read this passage. It was the it was the very passage that I had read to you just a few minutes ago. And all of a sudden, God said, you are to preach this message to the people. Hallelujah. And I'm hoping tonight that I can do it as good as needs to be done. And, but these are a few of the uh, points. I may not, I may not, I may not be able to get through all these passages because there are uh, all these uh, points because there's a lot to cover. Like, there's only a few, there's three points I want to make, but the way the Holy Spirit is moving right now, I may only have time to bring you a couple. Or maybe just one. I don't know. I may have to do a part two. If I do all three, I may have to do a part two to this. I don't even know what God wants me to do. I'm just going to work with him right now. I'm just going to work with him. Because he, he is moving in a way that I know I need to just follow him. <sighs> Glory to God. Point number one. I want to give to you the word come is used in this passage three times if you real if you remember that three times the word come is used if you are a non-believer come to Jesus come to the cross the message of the cross is the only message that will save your soul. Now, I need you to understand that. The message of the cross, Jesus Christ and him crucified, is the only message that will save your soul from sin. And God, and actually, this this is not correlating to this message but if you remember if you will remember I preached a message a while back on John 316 and I know that what I've been feeling and and God has given unto me I haven't been preaching on salvation for a while and so God has led me to this path and on next week, I'm going to be preaching on this. It might be a part two, or maybe it'll just be this one message. Um, but if you are a non-believer, come to Jesus, come to the cross. That's point number two. And then the last met and then the last point I wish to make. If you have loved ones that are non-believers, show them the way to get to Jesus. Show them the way to Calvary. And I'm asking the Lord, I'm asking that if you have non-believers and you have them if they're not if you have loved ones they don't believe like you do i'm asking that you would just show them this video share this video and hopefully i can get i hopefully i'm not trying to get myself riled up about my channel but um hopefully i can lead more people to the lord and that would be something I would want to have happen tonight. And if you are, excuse me, fellow folks, um, if you, if 
you are, if you are not saved at this time, I'm asking that you may not be able to come forward because it's a video, but if you have, if you have a need, if, if you are in need of saving, if you need God to save you, and if you need to be saved, and I'm asking that you would just step out in faith and pray this simple prayer. I'm, I'm asking tonight that you would um, give God all. Give Him your trust. Give Him your belief. And also, I also feel led to do this. Um, I've never really done this before, but um, I'll do this, um, I'll do it in any way I need to, but, um, if right now I'm going to be, I am going to be praying the sinner's prayer, and I want you to pray this prayer and mean it with all your heart and believe it with all your heart. Because just saying these words will not save you. But if you believe them, then you will be saved. Also, for those people who are believers, this happened in one of the services I was listening to. If you have non-believers, pray this prayer as well. That the spirit of conviction would fall upon their upon this soul. Now bow your heads, please. And, and raise your hands as a sign of surrender. Now let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus. Stop record speech off. I thank you that you love me and that you died to take away my sins. I admit that I am a sinner and I need you as my Savior. Come into my heart right now and forgive my sins. I trust in you to be my Savior and I depend on you to take me to heaven when I die. I will follow you as my Lord as long as I live. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Amen. Now if you heard, if you, if you prayed this simple prayer, then you have now become a Christian. And Give the Lord a hand of praise. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And if you need prayer this morning, I'm asking that you would just step out in faith as well. Heavenly Father, I come before you. In the name of your son, Jesus. Lord, I'm asking that you would touch these people. Deal with hearts and souls this, more, this evening as they pray with me for, for repentance. Hallelujah. And Lord, I'm asking that every need that they may have no matter what it is, spiritual, domestical, uh, economical, uh, financial, whatever the case may be, that it would be met and that healing virtue would fall upon people who need the healing. And Lord, I'm asking also that you would guide these people in the right direction. Give them the wisdom that they may need to to. To go about their day. Camera, stop recording. Speech off. And I'm asking it all in the great and mighty name of Jesus. Giving you praise and glory. 
Amen and amen. Glory to God. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this has helped you. I know it helped me. So let's 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 pray for a miracle today for America, Lord. Give us a miracle, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I hope this has blessed you. God bless you all.